Coming up on News Channel 12 Live at 6. Parking problems, it's always been an issue at WKU. Are solutions finally on the way for frustrated students and faculty? Plane crash, a man in Austin fed up with the federal government takes action in Austin, Texas by flying a private plane into an IRS building. Details are still emerging. Finally finished, the snow has stuck with us most of the winter, but could this trend be taking a turn? Jonathan Wall will tell us what we can expect this weekend. And senior send-off, the WKU men's basketball team celebrates its senior players as the tops square off against South Alabama. Can the tops continue their three-game win streak in the Sun Belt? Those stories and more tonight on News Channel 12, live at 6. Campus of Western Kentucky University, where the spirit makes the master. This is News Channel 12, live at 6. Good evening and welcome to News Channel 12 Live at 6. I'm Ben Hill. It's been a busy news day, but we begin our broadcast with an issue that's been driving students and faculty at Western Kentucky University crazy for years, but there may finally be a breakthrough. WKU Parking and Transportation Services admits there is a problem with parking and says they're trying to come up with a solution. News Channel 12's TJ Parker has the story. Students who park at WKU know how much of a hassle it can be. Parking on campus, it's rough if you don't get here early in the morning. Ugh, I hate parking. They even give their input on what should be done. We need more parking closer to campus. Thinking that this needs to be a project that needs to be worked on since Western's, you know, almost 20,000 plus. With around 20,000 students and nearly 3,000 faculty and staff members, WKU parking and transportation officials are in discussion on revising parking here on campus. With nearly 7,000 parking spaces here on campus and over 12,000 permits sold, the WKU Transportation and Parking Services are trying to devise a new plan for the future. We do oversell. And I mean, right now, anybody who walks in the front door can buy a parking permit. Jennifer Tugas, Director of Parking and Transportation at WKU, is presenting options to try and appeal to the community. The first alternative is to keep doing what we're doing. You know, I mean, we can always do that. The second alternative is to go to complete designated parking. And designated parking means that if you have a parking permit, you're guaranteed a parking space. With more permits than spaces, Tugas wants people to know that just because they have a permit now doesn't guarantee them a spot. Uh, the reality is, is, is we're really limited in how much land is available for parking. This is why Tugas and the university are trying to devise a plan that parkers will like. We want to maintain choices for people um, so, that, so that people can say, okay, this is what I want to do based on, on what my needs are. And After hearing input from the campus community, developing a new parking program with the Parking and Transportation Department, and speaking with the university president, Tugas hopes to have a decision for a plan by the end of this semester. On campus, TJ Parker, News Channel 12. For more information on the proposed plans, you can log on to the Parking and Transportation Services website at transportation.wku.edu. It's been four months since Martha Bettina Richmond was found dead and family and friends are still searching for answers. The Bowling Green Police Department found Richmond dead in her vehicle in the parking lot of the Bowling Green Parks and Recreation Center on November 22nd of last year. Dr. Lance Hahn, creator of the Richmond Reward Facebook page and family friend, is hoping to raise awareness in the community about the murder. Hahn consistently updates the page in order to keep everyone informed. Anyone with tips regarding the murder may receive up to a $10,000 reward. If you have any information concerning Richmond's murder, please contact the Bowling Green Police Department at 270-393-4000 or Crime Stoppers at 270-781-CLUE. If you would like to make a donation to the Richmond Reward Fund, you can do so by visiting the Richmond Reward Facebook page or by emailing richmondreward at gmail.com. An Austin, Texas resident with an apparent grudge against the Internal Revenue Service set his house on fire this morning. 
He then crashed a small plane into a building housing an IRS office with nearly 200 employees. Federal authorities identified the pilot of the Piper Cherokee as 53-year-old Joseph Andrew Stack. At this time, two people are injured and one person is still missing. Stack left a suicide message on a website registered to his name where he blames the IRS for his troubles. The governor of Texas says Texas must be sure to properly balance freedom with security. You know, our hope is that uh, the days of flying aircraft into buildings or, or other structures is over, but you always have some exposure in a, in a free society. So, um, you know, the balance is finding how to protect the people and also protect their freedoms and liberties. The Department of Homeland Security released a statement this morning saying they are looking into the pilot's history and do not believe this was an act of terrorism. Tax time can be stressful, but the WKU accounting majors are offering free tax assistance to students. If you're a WKU student and make under $31,000, all you have to do is to bring your W-2 forms and other tax info to Grice Hall. WKU accounting professor Richard Callahan says there's no reason not to file tax returns. If you've paid in tax, the only way you're going to get that back is if you file the return. So, you know, my advice would be to at least check to see if you have the ability to get a refund. If it is, you want to file it. There's no sense of leaving the money with Uncle Sam. The tax prep is available Tuesdays and Thursdays from 5 to 7 p.m. now until April 8th in Grice Hall. The service is free for Kentucky residents with a $15 charge to students from other states. For more information, you can email Richard Callahan at richard.callahan at wku.edu. They've been planning it for months, and it's finally here. Warren County Community Education's fifth annual celebration is tomorrow night. You see there some footage, hopefully soon, from last year's celebration. There it is. The event is Community Ed's largest fundraiser, and all the proceeds from this event go to help pay for after-school care for special needs children in Warren County. The biggest fundraising aspect of the night is the silent auction. Debbie Wade Jordan, the executive director of Community Ed, says there are lots of great items to bid on. Furniture items to getting your house cleaned, to having your carpets cleaned, to work done on your car, to great restaurant and gift certificates. There's all kinds of things available. There are over 30 gift baskets ranging in value from $50 to $500. The silent auction begins at 6 with a bee kicking off at 7 at the Sloan Convention Center here in Bowling Green. If you would like more information, you can visit the Community Ed web on the web at comed.us. Another local nonprofit says their fundraiser was a great success. Hope Harbor, located here in Bowling Green, held their second fundraiser Friday to raise awareness about the sexual and domestic abuse. The event was held at the l and Depot with roughly 60 people in attendance, raising over $3,000. Director Melissa Whitley considers it a success. About our agency and uh, met some new people and, and donors that are coming out to support the cause. And uh, anytime we can do that and to get our message out, I feel like it's, a, it's an event that we can be uh, proud of. Hope Harbor plans to hold more fundraisers later this spring and summer. For more information, visit hopeharbor.net or you can call them at 782-5014. Well, now with a first look at our weather forecast, here's Jonathan Wall. And Jonathan, luckily we've uh, seemed to escape some snow that seemed to be threatening us this weekend, but it warmed up a little bit today. Yes, it did. It was actually kind of nice out there, even though it only stayed in the 40s. Right now, we're still at 40 degrees up in Campbellsville, though. They are freezing literally at 32 degrees. And the warm spot on this map is over in Fort Campbell. It's still at 45, and that's not too far from our high today. And taking a wider view of the state, uh, the cold spot on the map is up in Bloomington, Indiana. And down in Nashville, they've been pretty warm all day. They're still at 44 degrees. And uh, taking a look at a forecast through, tonight, through the night, uh, by game time, it should be about 34 degrees with partly cloudy skies. Uh, late evening, that's actually supposed to read 28 degrees. Uh, by with mostly clear skies and then by the overnight we will bottom out at 21 degrees for the overnight. I'll have more on this and uh, other features in the forecast. We're looking at possibly just some rain this weekend as we take a look at this next system that's coming in over the weekend. So uh, I'll have more more information on that, Ben. 
Well, thank you, Jonathan. Glad to hear it uh, is warming up a little bit for the weekend. Well, have you ever been in the store looking at something that's supposed to be leather, but you weren't really sure? Well, coming up a little later, our own Melanie Neiman travels all the way to Florence, Italy to give us a lesson in leather. But before that, one WKU student is drop kicking his way into the ring. My cell phone number and John's cell phone number. Hey, pretty. And um, number the restaurant where we're going to be. And oh, I've um, left you my pager number too, just in case, because you never know. Um, John, you have the gift? The odds of a babysitter yeah, calling 911? One in 1,400. So should happen, please don't hesitate. The odds of a child being diagnosed with autism? One in 150. You know the odds of autism. Now learn the signs. Go to autismspeaks.org. Lifestyle can help your child succeed. You're watching News Channel 12 live at 6. Your source for late breaking news affecting you. Storm Center 12 forecast. The latest sports scores and highlights from your team. And consistently voted best newscast. News Channel 12, your source for news. Well, everyone knows a career can't be built in one day. However, WKU Career Services says one day can make a big difference for upcoming graduates. The Nashville Career Fairs is offering two fairs in one day at the Tennessee State Fairgrounds from 10 a.m. until 3 p.m. on February 23rd. Tickets are required, but they are available for free at the Career Services Center here on campus, which is located in the Downing University Center Annex in room 230. To find out more about the event, log on to wku.edu slash career. Well, a new education program will give students in the Commonwealth a jump start on their college education. Kentucky, along with seven other states, will participate in a pilot education program that will send some students to college two years early. The Louisville Courier Journal reported that under the program, students who complete the 10th grade with the higher test results will be allowed to enroll in colleges and universities. The program will begin in the fall of 2011, with 10 to 20 high schools taking part in the program. Headlocks, body slams, and chokeholds. Most people would never involve themselves in that much violence. However, one WKU student is putting himself through just that in order to pursue his dream. When most people think about their future, it usually does not involve this, this, or this. Freshman Seth Burchett is not your typical Western student. He is actually pursuing a dream that most people never chase. Burchett is training to become a professional wrestler. He decided to enter the ring last March, and ever since, he trains about two or three times a month. I grew up without a father, uh, and wrestling was the most consistent masculine thing in my life. It was always there. Uh, when he said it was going to come on, it always came on. And I fell in love with it at an early age. I was about six years old when I watched my very first match on TV, and I've been watching it ever since. Bridget enjoys wrestling because of the brotherhood that's created. Most people think wrestling is for entertainment, but there are other benefits the sport can provide the community. Uh, one of the positive things that people don't realize, uh, wrestlers and wrestling promotions do a lot of benefit shows. Most of the time when you're doing a benefit show, I know a lot of the guys in the back didn't get paid for this. They don't get paid. They go out uh, and do it because they love it uh, and to go to a worthy cause. And the rewards don't stop there. Burchett is looking for the ultimate reward, a heavyweight belt. Hard work and determination all go into his training. And when people say wrestling is fake, I would say get in the ring with me and let me work out with you. For News Channel 12, I'm Kara Key. Burchett's next match will be in March in Glasgow, Kentucky. Until then, he will continue to train. Well, we're coming up later in sports as we saddle up as the rodeo returns to Bowling Green.
pants are long. <laughs> Do they go on my head? Do they? Do the pants go on my head? No. They go on Everyday my moments head. can become teaching moments because learning starts long before school does. Give your child the start they need at bornlearning.org. Where have you been? I lost my cat. Oh, that's not right. Yeah, so I made this cat magnet to try and get him back. Cool. Does it work? Kind of. <laughs> nice. Yeah, but that's not my cat. I gotta keep working on it. See ya. See ya. Anything's possible. Keep thinking. Get started on your own inventions or just play some games at inventnow.org. Cat. I feel scared. Sometimes my parents have to take me to the hospital. I feel like a fish with no water. You know how to react to their asthma attacks. Here's how to prevent them. Call 1-866-NO-ATTACKS. Visit www.noattacks.org or call your doctor. Because even one attack is one too many. Well, you don't need me or this video to tell you how nice of a day it was today. And we were actually pretty seasonable today. Uh, that's a beautiful shot of Guthrie Tower there. And now you can see, very seasonable today and uh, didn't come anywhere close to our records for today and nothing but goose eggs for the rain today. And still uh, st sitting at 40 degrees right now with a dew point of 24 and the, dew and the barometer is rising. And uh, as we speak look, around the region though, 35 up in Louisville, 30 up in Indianapolis. Uh, Charleston, West Virginia is at 32. Atlanta is at 45. And down in Tuscaloosa, they are at 50 degrees. That's a warm spot on the, on the map for today. And uh, taking a look at satellite radar, nothing much to speak of, just some clouds over to the eastern part of Kentucky. But as we take a look off to the west, we do have a little bit of rain moving into Kansas City. And that's associated with our system, uh, next system that will be bringing us mainly rain for the weekend, and that's good news. Uh, I know you're probably sick of the snow right now, and here it is right now. You can see mainly snow over, over the Rockies and over, over the western part of the country and the mid part of the country, but as it gets here and hits this warmer air, it's just gonna be mainly rain. There may be some snow at the night during the nighttime hours, but really, we can't expect any uh, accumulations here tonight, or here during the weekend, I mean. 36-hour uh, forecast, nothing but uh, high pressure moving into the air region, warmer air as a result of us being on the backside of this high, bringing the southern and bringing the winds mainly out of the south and in the wet, out of the west. And uh, let's take a look at the tip-off forecast for tonight. Tip-off is at 7 p.m. The tops are taking on South Alabama. And it's senior night, so congratulations to the seniors. Tonight it will be at 34 degrees by tip-off and partly cloudy skies. And then for tonight, we will actually bottom out at 21, much different from our high today, mostly clear. And uh, we'll also be looking at light winds out of the west. And uh, tomorrow, we are looking at 45, mostly sunny, relatively pleasant. And the winds will be light and variable. And as we take a look at the five-day forecast, take a look at Friday. That's just, mainly, that's just mainly snow at night. That's a slight chance of snow at night. And then by the weekend, it's just mainly rain chances. And Sunday, we will be topping out at 50. And uh, looks like a pretty good forecast. How about that, Ben? Sounds good to me, Jonathan. Thank you very much. Well, with all the cold weather we've been experiencing lately, it may seem hard to believe, but believe it or not, spring break is right around the corner. With March 8th just a couple of weeks away, many students may head to the gym to get in shape. And now is the perfect time. After 18 months of construction, the newest addition to WKU's Preston Center is complete. The new fitness center features a variety of exercise machines and is three times larger than the previous facility. WKU wellness coordinator Alyssa Arnold says people do seem to love all the new features. And if you want to begin working out but aren't sure where to start, Arnold says free fitness orientations are offered at the center four times each day. And that equipment is available for all types of workouts from advanced to beginner. And if you'd like to see just how strong you are, WKU Health and Fitness is giving you the opportunity to do just that. The fourth annual Big Red Reps will take place next week. The winner of this muscle endurance competition will be determined by the male who can lift the most reps of his body weight and the female who can lift the most reps of half her body weight. 
You can sign up for either of the three dates by going to the Preston Center in person. If you'd like more information about Big Red Reps or the, for the Preston Center's hours of operation, you can log on to www.wku.edu slash IMREC. Well, Chris Veach now joins us with a preview of sports. And Chris, a big night for uh, the WK men's uh, basketball team. Uh, senior night, we're signing off uh, four players that are uh, pretty integral to the Tops team. Not just that, they continue its three-game winning streak in Sunbelt play. Plus, the Lone Star Rodeo was in town this weekend. A lot of Bronco busting action and more coming up. Every year, one million families face losing their homes to foreclosure. If you're ignoring your mortgage issues, things will only get worse. Call 1-888-995-HOPE, because nothing is worse than doing nothing. Possibilities when you open a child's mind to reading. Explore new worlds. Read. Scores and highlights from your team. News Channel 12. Sports. It's senior night at EA Ditto Arena as the Tops play host to the South Alabama Jaguars. A.J. Slaughter, Jeremy Evans, Anthony Sally, and Nemanja Milosevic will all be honored tonight as they take the home court for one last time. WKU hopes to continue their three-game winning streak in Sunbelt play against the Jags. The Tops are coming off a 67-46 win at Arkansas Little Rock last Saturday, snapping a six-game road losing streak. Last time WKU squared off with South Alabama, the Hilltoppers pulled off a 67 to 64 overtime win down in Mobile, Alabama. Tip off begins at seven. WKU women's basketball celebrates its senior night last night, last evening against South Alabama and raised breast cancer awareness by pulling out the pink uniforms. Let's go to the highlights. Lady Tops open things up with a 9-0 run. Amy McNear with the lay in right there. But later in and later in the half, McNear driving again. Can't quite get the layup right here, but senior Arnika Brown pounding the board, puts it back up in, and she had 15 rebounds in the first half. And senior Dominique Duck having a good senior night. Knocks down the shot. She had 15 points. WKU led 33-23 at the half, but second half, the Lay Jaguars came back. Christian Shelter gets the turnaround jumper. She scored eight in the first three minutes, and then she shows the range right here. Knocks down the three. USA ties it at 42 with 12 minutes to play, but the lay top started pulling away. Senior Kenzie Rich gets the feed for Mamie McNear, drains it, puts WKU up 51 to 44, but it was all Arnika Brown shining on senior night. Gets the bucket and the foul. Brown led everybody in scoring with 18 points and pulled down a record 24 rebounds. Lady Tops win 67 to 61. The 91st season of Hilltopper Baseball opens this weekend, even if the weather isn't cooperating. WKU will be hosting Kent State at Nick Dennis Field for a three-game series. 
The opening pitch is set for Friday at 3 with the action continuing Saturday at 2 and concluding Sunday at 1. Both squads are coming off 40 plus winning seasons and NCAA tournament bids. The Hilltoppers claimed the Sunbelt Conference title last season while the Golden Flashes took home the Mid-American Tournament Championship. Lots of boys high school hoops tonight with many teams finishing off their season. The Bowling Green Purples cap off their season at home against Davies County. The Purples currently sit on top in the fourth region with a 23-3 overall record. Other games tonight, Warren Central travels to North Hardin with the action tipping off at 6. And Warren East heads to Monroe County to take on the Falcons at 7.30. For 28 years, the Lone Star Rodeo Company has been bringing its spirit of the West Tour to Bowling Green. News Channel 12's Nick Morgan went to find out just what makes this event so popular. Tradition, excitement, and family fun. These were the themes conveyed this past weekend as the Lone Star Rodeo Spirit of the West Tour came through Bowling Green for the 28th straight year. Cowboys and cowgirls from all over South Central Kentucky piled into WKU's Exposition Center to witness what has become an annual tradition in Bowling Green. It's a great family event. It's a good event for Bowling Green and that everybody in the surrounding area can bring their family out, have a good time. From calf roping to kids activities and entertainment, Preston Folk says his rodeo has something for everyone. We got the Gold Rush. We have the best dressed cowboy and cowgirl contest. We got some halftime uh, events that are going to be for the audience too. So we try to incorporate everything for everybody that comes. Lone Star Rodeo Company began 61 years ago in Marfa, Texas. Folks has been in charge for the past 33 years and has since seen his rodeo grow. Highlighting the traditions of the Old West, the company hosts over 40 events in 11 states each year. With such a long history, Folks says his company develops a special relationship with the towns it visits. Over the years, people uh, have the same seats they've had since we started coming here. It's great. You get to know them. They get to know you, and it's kind of like a family. The Lone Star Rodeo has been and will continue to be a piece of Bowling Green tradition because, as Preston Folks says, at some point, everybody wanted to be a cowboy or a cowgirl. Reporting for News Channel 12, I'm Nick Morgan. When asked if the rodeo would return to Bowling Green for a 29th straight year, Falks replied without hesitation, absolutely. So Ben, you think you're going to compete next year in the rodeo? Get on one of them Broncos? I could give it a shot, but I tell you, I won't last long. And it looks like uh, we uh, see someone else who may not be lasting long. Uh, we've just been handed a breaking news. Uh, the College Heights Herald, uh, Chris, is reporting that the athletics director, Wood Selig, uh, will schedule a time with the media tomorrow to possibly announce his resignation. Uh, now, I do want to say that WKU Athletics uh, from News Channel 12, we have spoke with them, but they, they will not confirm anything. Again, but this is what the Herald is reporting. What does this mean to the university? We, we, we've been through all of this, of course, with uh, the Rays and now him possibly resigning. What, is it, what does this mean? Well, this couldn't come at a, a more interesting time. Wood Sela gets the Rays and a, a lot of controversy on campus about that. So that, that is what puzzles me the most about this. But it, with the football team getting a new head coach and Willie Taggart making the new transition, uh, this can maybe not come at a worse time. Well, uh, Chris, I know we talked about a lot uh, last semester when all this was going on. Uh, we, we had an issue with, uh, you know, the, there was a, a lot of problems with um, the, the money and the raises, the potential raises that they were going to receive. And now it, uh, it's looking like, okay, uh, I'm, I'm being told we need to move on. So uh, we'll, we'll, we'll follow this story and we will follow uh, the reporting uh, as information uh, comes to us. So for a change of topic, a little bit lighter topic, if you will, uh, leather is not just a fashion for motorcyclists anymore. You can see shoes, purses, jackets, and even leather dresses walking the streets of Bowling Green. Leather may be seen throughout the world, but in Florence, Italy, handcrafted leather is a time-honored tradition. Last summer, our own Melanie Neiman spent time in Italy and learned some special techniques from the world-famous Florentine leather makers. Italy is famous for wine and pasta, but it is also known for its leather. It's world-renowned as the finest, so that's why we wanted to buy here. These leather bags might all look the same, but there's one thing about this bag from Florence that sets it apart. It's the technique that people use for make the leather and make the Florentine leather so special. 
Unlike other Italian leather makers who use chemicals, those in Florence use only natural ingredients in their dyeing process. We use all veggie dyes, we use uh, chemicals like magnesium, they're all natural. Although Florence is famous for its coloring methods, the leather itself comes from all over the world. It comes from Argentina, Australia, New Zealand. Italians do have an advantage, though. Labadesa says leather making has been an Italian tradition for over 2,000 years. They started with the Romans making the armors and stuff. So whether you need a purse or a leather jacket, Italy is the place to go. Reporting in Florence, I'm Melanie Neiman. Well, that is all the time we have for tonight. Thanks for making News Channel 12 your source for news. Have a good night.